Another uh, point that plays a factor is hair color and hair caliber and hair density. You have very nice texture and color of hair. You have a medium brown, blondish hair, you've got some highlights happening in there, your hair has a bit of a wave to it, and you have very good density back here. So those are all things which lends itself to uh, a more natural and fuller uh, look, as opposed to if you had jet black, coarse, straight hair and really pale skin, then you would see through to the pale skin through the black hair. So you have a nice setup for having a nice, uh, pleasing result. So I would mention to you at this stage, have one session, you let it all grow in, give it a good year to get mature, and then you and I reassess everything. At that point, after one year, you might say one of two things. This is great, I'm really happy with everything. Uh, do I need any more sessions at this point in time? I'll say no. You might say, hey, this is great, could I have another session? I'll say, sure, but there's no urgency. So it's best to assume that because you're only 35 and you're having one session in the near future, you may have more sessions in the future, depending on your rate of thinning. Okay, But if you lost the rest of this hair, it could take a second and third session when and if needed. Okay, and what, what is it, why is there a limitation on how close you can put the follicles? Well, we have to look at how many grafts we're doing in an area and the overall blood supply. I want to make sure all my little grafts grow. And then physically, um, you know, if the grafts are too close together, you just can't place all the grafts or they'll pop out. So that would be a limitation. Okay. Do you have any questions, Mark? Um, yeah, so you mentioned that there would be a pencil line scar at the back. Is that because of trichophytic? Closure, well, trichophytic closure um, is a technique which was developed in the last couple of years, which is a way of closing the suture line. Um, what happens is you have two skin edges, and when you close the skin edges, you want to have as minimal scars as possible. So what happens in a trichophytic closure is you nip off a portion um, of the edge of the lower line of the incision. And what happens is when you bring the two edges together, instead of just coming together like this, the hairs from the lower edge grow out through the scar. And so by doing that, it helps to give you a smaller scar. So that's something that we do at this office as well to help minimize scarring. Um, so I think you know it's important to know how you're going to look after a procedure. The procedure itself can take anywhere from three and a half to seven and a half hours, depending on the size of the session. Um, the area is uh, anesthetized, so we use a local anesthetic. We like to compare it favorably to going to the dentist. So the area at the back is numbed, the area at the top is numbed. Um, the area is closed, uh, sutured closed, and then I make all my sites at the top once the strip has been dissected into all the little follicular units. And then at the end of the procedure, most likely you will not need a turban type bandage. You go home that evening, and I call you that night to see how you're doing. You might have some discomfort is that evening when the local anesthetic comes out. You can feel some pulling at the back where the sutures are. However, I do give out two different levels of pain tablets to take so you shouldn't have any discomfort. And I always call my patients that evening to see how you're doing. Uh, you have my cell number, I'm available 24 hours, so if you have any questions or concerns, just give me a call. And then I see everybody the next day. You come in, I wash your hair really well, inspect all my little grafts, and the day after the procedure you shouldn't need any medication, at most maybe um, a Tylenol um, if you feel that there's a little bit of discomfort still from the back of the scalp. And then we see you at day seven when you come in to get your sutures out. Now another question patients ask is, well, what are the side effects of the procedure? What can I expect the week after surgery? I always suggest patients take a week off work. You may not need it, however, with surgery, you get swelling. And because the surgery is on top of your scalp and because of gravity, you may get some degree of swelling. One in 200 patients can get so much swelling because of the sinking, you may almost get two big black eyes. You look like you've been in a big fight and lost. You feel okay, but you may have some degree of swelling. Some patients don't get any. The average patient will get a little bit of puffiness, but it's gone in a week. I never know in advance if you're going to have a little or a lot, so it's best to plan on the week off work. Okay, is there anything I can do to, to help reduce the swelling? Absolutely. Um, what you can do is sleep with two or three pillows behind you for the first few nights at a 45 degree angle so the swelling drains out. We also give you, when you leave here the day of the procedure, we give you ice packs to put on your forehead to help minimize swelling. We also say uh, no sports or heavy physical activity for one week. You can go for walks and go to movies and so forth, but we don't want you playing you know, hockey or soccer or anything like that where you might hit your head or you might raise your blood pressure uh, because you will have lots of little crusts and grafts on the top of your head. So you want to be careful for a week. The other thing to know is this is surgery. So whenever you cut the skin, you cut the small nerve endings. You'll have some partial temporary numbness. The scalp will feel a little less sensitive for anywhere from 6 to 12 months. 
before all the sensation returns. And sometimes you can have a little bit of permanent decreased sensation in certain little spots. Okay? Um, whenever you cut the skin, there's a chance of infection. But we put you on an antibiotic the day of the procedure. We've never ever had a serious infection. The scalp has a great blood supply and infections occur, but they're rare. Sometimes a patient may get something called folliculitis. What's that? Well, similar to in your beard, you may get the odd ingrown hair or pimple. Sometimes you can get the odd ingrown hair or pimple where the graft is, just as it's beginning to kick in. And if that happens, give me a call. I'm always available. However, I'd probably be suggesting a hot compress on the area, just like you would if you had an ingrown hair in your beard. Um, you will have little crusts or scabs which form on top of each graft. That's a congeal blood which holds the graft in place. Now they're very small, and you know, luckily you have a lot of hair in the area, so you'll have a very easy time camouflaging it. The crust will start to fall off at seven days. By 10 to 12 days, they'll be gone. But that's also why we encourage lying in the tub, soaking, massaging at the back, and lightly washing up top where the grafts are. That encourages the crust to come off. And we give you something called Surgy Lube, which is a water-soluble lubricant to put on your suture line, again, to help dissolve crusting on the suture line so that the stitches come out easily at day seven. So the crusts are gone certainly by 10, 12 days. Now, every hair that I put in has been clipped short because we clipped the row. You can expect every hair that we put in to initially fall out. And they usually fall out within the first two to three weeks. So after two to three weeks, it's going to look like we haven't done anything. That's normal. Um, and then the hair goes into a dormant stage. So the roots remain, um, but they're in a dormant or sleeping stage. Then at three months for sure, so anywhere from two to three months, the hairs begin to kick in. Now, hair grows on average about a half an inch a month, hair from the back of the scalp. So at three months, it starts to grow. So that's basically ground zero, all right? Then after about six months, the hair will be at least an inch and a half long. If you were an otherwise bald fellow, you'd be really happy at six months because there wasn't anything there before. Right. However, you have quite a bit of hair in the area. So the more hair you have to begin with, the more important it is to wait the full 10 to 12 months for, before you and I reassess the maturity. Because it's six months, an inch and a half long, but by 10 to 12 months, those new hairs will have fully grown out and matured. Because what happens is the new hairs are narrow and fine. They're tapered. And so it's not until they've fully grown out that you've cut, the, cut off the end bits that you get the full maturity. And so because you have quite a bit of hair in the area, at six months, you're, they're just sort of growing out in and amongst your own pre-existing hair. Mm -hmm. So I'm available anytime for phone calls and if you have any questions, but really we reassess everything at 10 to 12 months. Great. So Mark, um, if you're interested in having a procedure, there are some pre-operative instructions. What shouldn't you do one week before the procedure? Well, no aspirin, alcohol, or vitamin E capsules, or any medications which might thin your blood. And the reason for that is we're making a lot of little nicks at the top of your scalp. So we want to minimize any oozing during the procedure so we'll have an easy time planting all your little grafts. So that's very important to follow those preoperative instructions. Um, we want to know if you're on any medications. We want to know if you have any allergies to any medications and that you're otherwise healthy. In terms of blood tests, we always do hepatitis B, hepatitis C, and HIV blood tests as well um, to ensure that you're otherwise healthy. Well, Mark, thanks very much for coming in. Um, if you have any other questions, please feel free to come back and see me or call or email. I'm happy to answer any more questions you have. And once you've decided, let us know and we'll get you in and we'll go from there. Great. Thank you. Thank you very much.